So the first question I get from everyone when I introduce them to DeFi is how are DeFi APRs so high? So today let's talk about all the ways you can make yield on your crypto. And by yield, I mean making more crypto with your crypto, anywhere from 6% to over 200% APR or even more. Meanwhile, traditional finance won't give you more than 0.5% per year on your money. This is why I'm so bullish on DeFi because with the introduction of stable coins, there's much less reason to leave the space and go back to fiat as there was in 2017. And if you haven't watched the intro to DeFi series, check that out now. So let's go over the seven different ways to make yield in the DeFi space. Staking rewards, service provision, lending protocols, fee distribution, equity growth, incentivized liquidity pools, and auto compounding with your yield farm. First, staking rewards. So staking rewards are probably the most boring way to do it, but you're still making 6%, so you can't really complain. These are how you make a system work by staking your coins as a node in the system. So soon Ethereum is moving from a proof of work system to a proof of stake system, and this will mean a huge reduction of energy use, and it will also mean they need validators to help secure the system. Now, to be a validator, you need to stake a minimum of 32 ETH, which will make around 6%. Now, there's a bunch of different uh, blockchains that use validators. Uh, you have Cosmos, you have Solana, you have a bunch of different ways where you can just stake coins that you have in order to secure the network, and this is called staking rewards. Number two is service provision. So you can provide a service with your crypto assets through something called liquidity pooling. Liquidity basically allows a market to run. It is the backbone of DeFi, and so when you provide liquidity, you're giving others the ability to make trades between different assets, and then you're just taking a small cut of the exchange at the same time. It's kind of like a currency exchange booth at the airport, except in DeFi, you are the booth. So for example, if you pull two coins like Ethereum and DAI, you will make a small percentage of every trade that exchanges between those two coins. So for example, if a liquidity pool had $100,000 in liquidity and you had 10,000 in there, you would make 10% of all fees. Now, when you provide liquidity to a DEX, a decentralized exchange like Uniswap or Sushi, you are providing a service to its users who want to swap those assets. So both platforms charge a 0.3% fee for each transaction. On Uniswap, that all goes back to liquidity providers. On Sushi, it's done a little differently, which I'll get into shortly. Number three, lending protocols. So much like in the real world, a bank takes a deposit from a customer, they will give you maybe 1% interest, then they'll loan that same money out to another customer for 7% interest. This is the same thing a decentralized protocol will do, except they'll do it with a smart contract in the middle to reduce cost and increase efficiency. So there's no man in the middle like organizing stuff, it's all done through code. Now at DeFi, the lending protocols work as over collateralized loans. So if you can't pay back the loan, they will liquidate some of your assets to pay it back. So you're never borrowing more than you have in there. And the price of borrowing an asset depends on the underlying need. So one person's demand or need for borrowing that asset is another person's yield on the asset that they are lending out. One way that it's used often is investors who are extremely bullish on an asset may want to borrow stable coins to buy more of a you know, more volatile asset. So they're taking a risk and betting on that asset going up and the lender of the stable coins, they get paid either way. So it's much lower risk, but also much lower reward. So for example, in 2020, when I was first getting into DeFi, I was extremely bullish on Ethereum and I took out some compound finance loans to buy more of it. So I borrowed a stable coin, um, USDC or DAI or both, and I bought more Ethereum. Now at the time, Ethereum was under $400 and I knew that the all time high was 1500. So I'm taking a bet that that is going to run at least up to where it previously was. And given that it ended up going over 4,000, that means the asset growth on that Ethereum bet was much greater than the interest that I had to pay to borrow those stable coins. But Compound that lent me those stable coins, they were getting paid regardless of what if Ethereum went up or went on. And luckily I paid off those loans before the price crashed. Now this is Compound Finance and as you earn Compound, it will come up here. And say, for example, you put your DAI coin in here, you'll see that you're making 2.73% on DAI and then you're also making this equity 
on the compound. So these are the tokens you're farming as you are lending out your assets. Same thing in Aave. There's different APYs. So you'll deposit, you get 3.05% and they, they will lend it out at 4.24%. So they're making up the difference. And then you're also making 1.42% APR on their token. So, you know, altogether you're making 4.5% on a stable coin. Fee distribution. Some platforms charge fees for services and then will send some of their token holders back some of these fees as a dividend. A good example of this is Sushi. So I mentioned earlier in the video that they do things differently than Uniswap. Both Uniswap and Sushi offer a 0.3% fee for swaps and 0.25 is given to their liquidity providers and the remaining 0.05 is distributed to Sushi token holders. So if you stake your Sushi in something called Sushi Bar, you'll get tokens called X Sushi back and you will earn these fees as a dividend to your staked sushi. Unlike Uniswap, everything goes back to the liquidity providers. Another protocol that does this is Curve Finance, which is a complex exchange that focuses on stable coin swaps or, or coins that are equal in value. And what they do is they distribute fees to their token holders, but they do it a little differently. They will reward you more APR the longer that you lock up your tokens. So if you decide to lock it up for a year, you'll get 5%. If you decide to lock up your tokens for four years, you get 20%. So they do it as an incentivized structure to keep people locked in for longer, um, but it's essentially a dividend just increasing in value the more you believe in their system. Equity growth. So because DeFi assets are in hyper growth phase, it's so new that most of the insane yield numbers come from increased equity growth or your stuff being worth more. So when you put your assets into Aave or Compound, which are the lending protocols, you're making interest on the assets, but you're also getting free equity in the form of Compound or Aave tokens. So a lot of these DeFi protocols and new projects, they're offering all sorts of rewards for using their platform. And if you think of it, it's a new startup. So if you remember when Uber first started or when Airbnb first started, they gave out a bunch of rides or discount codes. So if I used it, I'd get $25. If I invited my friends, they'd get $25 and I'd also get $25. This is kind of like that. These platforms are giving out equity or tokens in hopes to win over a large number of users because they want market share. They want people to come there first because it's a new protocol. So in the beginning, you will get more tokens for you using their system than you might do later on because they're trying to incentivize you to use them. And then hopefully the equity that you're getting as a reward will grow over time. So for example, here's how Compound has grown, you know, in the last year, same as Aave. Of course, there's been a little drop, but the increase when it was at its high was huge. Incentivized liquidity pools. So this is where you're gonna get into high risk, high reward stuff. You could make a bunch of money, you could lose all of your money. It's incredibly risky. You can see anywhere from a thousand percent APR to 200,000 percent APR. No joke. New platforms will offer insane rewards in order to get their project off the grind. And now some of these projects are real products. For example, I remember when Sushi first launched and it had crazy APRs. However, what often happens with these projects, if they are too aggressive with their rewards, is that they print too many tokens and as people are farming them, they are selling them off and the APR can't keep up with the inflation. So if the price per coin goes up, then the yield paid on your crypto gives you new coins and now you have more coins that are worth more money. However, when the price per token that you're getting as a reward goes down, so does the APR, and the coins that you have been rewarded are worth less. So it actually promotes this idea of keeping dumping your rewards in order to lock in those gains. Now, because they're rewarding you with their own token, they're minting so many that the price is gonna drop as the number of people come in, they continue to sell it. And then at some point, no more new money comes in. It's basically the crypto version of a Ponzi scheme. Now, have I made a good bit of money on these projects and these Ponzi's? Yes. But have I also lost some because I got too greedy? Yes. 
I also lost them when I didn't know about impermanent loss, which I'm going to talk about on another video. So make sure you're, you're subscribed so that you don't fall victim to this. And lastly, auto compounding yield farms. So if compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world, then auto compounding is the ninth. This is when your rewards are automatically reinvested into your liquidity pool rather than you needing to do it yourself. So in the last point where I talked about incentivized liquidity pooling and you selling off your rewards, this is essentially a system that sells the rewards on your behalf and then adds to your liquidity pool. So for example, say you are farming with stable coins, you're farming USDC and DAI coin, so you're not worried about fluctuations in price so much and you're getting this magical token, when you auto compound it, they're selling the token into your liquidity pool token, so DAI or USDC, and then when you take it out, you have much more. Now, why is this so good? It's because with the rising price of Ethereum, so gas prices, it can be a game changer for your profitability. And if you, for example, auto compounded something for a year, it's also very good tax-wise. Here are some examples of auto compounders on Ethereum that you could use. Okay, so this is Pickle Finance. This is on Ethereum and it, like it says, auto compounds rewards to boost yields on your behalf. So if you come in here, you can see all of the different farms that they have and what they will auto compound for you. So you can see here that they're getting 134% on ALCX ETH. And of course, they take a small percentage for doing the auto compounding for you, but especially on Ethereum, when the gas fee is so expensive, this type of thing definitely makes sense, especially if you're doing things over the long term. Now on Polygon, which is a, another network, you can see here that says APY, and this is basically the interest when they compound uh, however many times per day. Um, whenever it says APY, that's basically taking the APR and automatically reinvesting the rewards all the time. So the regular APR is 135, but because they're auto compounding it all the time, it's 328. There's also 11.finance. This is on both Polygon and Binance. And you can see here that they're, you know, these two is 197% APY. And that's, you know, 0.3% APR per day. And this is the fee structure. So if you take it out, it's 0.1% fee and they'll take 3.5% of the profits. So for all of the money that they reinvest for you and get profits on, they'll take 3.5% on that, which is actually not bad at all if you compare it to traditional systems. And that's it. Those are the seven ways to make more crypto on your crypto. And as DeFi matures, those yields will definitely drop over time, just like they do with startups. Uh, same way when Uber hit critical mass, the reward levels dropped. And also, I've never, have you met anyone recently that doesn't know what Uber is? It's like, you're not finding anyone to give you more credit. So when we hit critical mass in DeFi, that's also going to happen. However, we are still, still so early on the DeFi train. It pretty much only started, you know, summer 2020 was DeFi summer, because that's when everything launched and it is still the wild west out there. Only a very small percentage of people that have Ethereum in their wallet, they're not even in DeFi yet. They just, they sit on exchanges and they're not doing anything with it. So there is so much potential still in this space. Now, as more people come into the space, there's gonna be way more innovations, not just in the financial industry, but other industries also. Finance is just coming first because that's how to get more people in. And if you haven't seen my video on Alchemix and the amazing world of self-paying loans, you should check it out because that is innovation at its finest that already exists. Now, if you're interested in DeFi and wanna learn more and all of it and everything that I'm talking about, check out Zero to DeFi, which is a crash course in decentralized finance. It will show you everything you need to know about earning money on your crypto. You can go from knowing literally zero about this whole space to knowing exactly how and where to put your crypto in order to make more crypto. I want you to be confident coming out of this that you know exactly what you're doing. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna be putting weekly videos up, more about crypto, about DeFi, about ways that creators can make more in this space. So subscribe below and like this video.